Hello, my name is Matt. I'm the day trader next door. Today I'm going to talk to you about what you need as far as a computer and technology if you're going to start day trading and even what you might need to day trade for a living. Now you don't need this, but a lot of people tell you you need even more just to get started, let alone do this for a living. This whole setup here, not counting that top monitor because I had it anyway, but everything else, including my computer, you can put this together for not much more than $1,500 US. Down in the description, I'll have links to everything that's on here and show you what the components are. So we're going to start with some must-haves. A good, reliable computer. What does that mean? To me, it means Intel. AMD is apparently doing great, but I just haven't had any luck with them in the past. An Intel processor, i7 ideally, i5 maybe. I've only ever used i7s. But it doesn't have to be the newest and the fastest computer that there is. And you don't have to pay a lot of money for it. It does have to have a solid state drive. They boot up so much faster. If your computer crashes for some reason, you can reboot in like 30 seconds or less. Standard hard drive, it might be a few minutes. The computer that I use to trade for a living and have used for the last several years, I bought it about six years ago. Uh, it's an i7-3770, small form factor, HP Elite Desk computer. Currently has 16 gigs of RAM. It came with eight. I added eight and I put a separate video card in it. It's an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti. It's a four gig card. That gives me three dedicated monitor outputs and it will do the two in 4K and the one in 1080. The thing about this is reliability. It does not have to be the newest and the fastest. It just has to be reliable. It has to be a stable system. It has to be a fast enough system. But the thing is, when you're trading, you're not really using a lot of data. You're not using a lot of bandwidth. You're not using a whole lot of processing power either, really, compared to gaming or a whole bunch of other things, video editing, all that kind of stuff. Really, as long as you have something that will support the displays that you have and that doesn't get bogged down and crash all the time, that's really all you need. Now, there's nothing wrong with having the latest and greatest and I mean if you if you want to spoil yourself by all means go ahead especially if you're making your living on this but I'm pretty frugal and uh, I don't like to spend money when I don't have to because every dollar I spend is really more like two dollars I've got to earn because you pay taxes on your income then you pay taxes on your purchase I would much rather make do with what works and what doesn't cost me anything more next thing enough screen real estate is this enough this you would think might be too much but honestly I'm so used to this I use all of it and I love it. What's enough screen real estate? To me, and I mean, maybe I'm a little bit overkill, but I wouldn't want to go with less than two monitors, only because you can have one monitor with your platform and your other monitor with your charts. And you can split them. And on one, you can have half to work on uh, something in Microsoft Word or even have YouTube on something for a healthy distraction during the slow market time. Now, what about laptops? I kind of have strong opinions on this, but you know, it's to each their own. The guys that you see on the beach with the rented Lamborghinis, they're all trading on laptops. And I suppose there's nothing wrong with that if you have to travel or if you're a swing trader. But if you're a day trader, ah, it's just not enough to me. The screens are too small. I actually tried this at one point to have kind of a portable setup. I, I bought a decent laptop and I got a second monitor, a USB monitor, the exact same size and resolution as the screen on my laptop was. I didn't like it. They were too small and no matter how I set it up, the displays didn't quite work correctly. They were just a little bit was cut off on one all the time and it just it just didn't work for me. But if you were going to have a laptop and you're comfortable on small screens and small computers, which I'm not a big guy, I got big hands. I'm just not really comfortable with that only when I have to. And of course, a mouse, you need to have a mouse trying to execute day trades on a taskbar is just asking for a fat fingers. Next thing, a good internet connection. By good, it doesn't necessarily have to be super fast, super high bandwidth, but certainly high speed and ideally the lowest latency you can get. Latency is what's most important to us. Now I live up in small town Ontario, Canada. So my latency to Chicago where my trades are executed is not great, but I do have a good high speed connection. I've never had any issues. Another thing, a wired connection. Don't try and trade on Wi-Fi. If you're placing swing trades, that's one thing. If you're in an in the moment day trade, and your Wi-Fi cuts out, you just don't want to go there. Don't go asking for trouble. Don't go there. Wired connection. Speaking of wired things, a wired mouse. You should maybe have a wired keyboard, too, but especially the mouse. The mouse is what you're executing your trades with. That's what's making the click to buy or sell. Get a wired mouse. There's no battery to go dead. There's no Bluetooth to kick out. Wired mouse, easy. Next thing, backup. Backup, backup, backup. You cannot go wrong with backup. You need backup. And by backup, there's a few things. A backup way to get out of a trade. Not to put a trade on. 
a backup way to get out of a trade in case something goes crazy. You should have the app on your phone for your particular broker or your price feed, whatever it might be. I have a CQG app on my phone. I never trade with it. I've never had to close a trade on it. But if my internet cuts out at home or if my power cuts out, I know that I can get in there and close the trade. Now, it shouldn't be an issue anyway, because I'm going to have a stop in the market. As far as a battery backup, I have one of those. I don't think it's an absolute must if you have something ready to go in your hand that you can cancel a trade if you have to, but certainly a nice thing to have. Now on to the nice to have. Lots of monitors, all kinds of monitors, screens, left, right, up, down, everywhere screen. As you can see, what I have here is two 4K televisions. They're 55 inches each. What that works out to is four 27-inch monitors, one, two, three, four, on each side. Now I have my screen split a little bit differently than that. I have four 27s across the bottom and I have smaller ones on the top. It's been a process getting it just right, but it's perfect now until I change it. Now it wasn't the easiest thing to get that to work, but it's not too hard either. It took me buying three or four different TVs only to return them and realize that the picture just wasn't clear enough like a computer monitor. I eventually found these and they are excellent. They are every bit as sharp. In fact, they're sharper than that monitor I have up there. That's just a cheapie. I never really bought expensive monitors. You know, they're right up at my face, I can see. Other than that, it just takes fiddling with a couple of little settings, and these things work great. If you're just starting and you want a little bit more real estate than you have, just grab a second monitor. 27-inch monitors like that, they're a dime a dozen. You can get them for 120, 150 bucks all day. You don't need 4K for a 27 inch monitor. 1080 is just fine. Maybe you must have somewhere in the middle. A comfortable workstation. Some place where you can sit there for hours and be comfortable. Especially whenever your brain is telling you to be uncomfortable. Say if you're trying to come back from a loss or dig out of a hole on the day, you want to be somewhere where you're okay sitting there until you're done. I'm a big guy. I'm six foot five. This chair is an actual king size office chair. Everything is steel. There's no plastic on it anywhere. It's super heavy, super big. I can lean back on it, rest my head on it like the way you're supposed to. A regular office chair, my head would hang right off the back. I mentioned I'm frugal. This desk used to be a workbench. It came with the house. In fact, my office was the workshop. This is my work office, but it's also my studio. I make music in here. I'm doing these videos in here. It's nice and earthy. Certainly not fancy, but neither am I. It, it really suits me. See people getting sit-stand desks these days. I got one right here. I'm tall. It's a workbench, so it's up high. I can sit in my chair and comfortably trade. I can stand up and comfortably trade. It works great. Another nice to have, the newest, fastest computer. Now, there's all kinds of people on the internet, especially who are selling computers, many of which are great guys, that will tell you you need the most expensive computer that you can afford in order to trade, especially if you're going to day trade. I'm not going to say that's totally false advice, like maybe I would get an extra tick here and there if I had the fastest machine. But in the time I've had this, there hasn't been even one time where I felt that it's cost me money. And I'm really not wanting for any more. It's still fast. Now, something people will tell you is you should have nothing else on your computer except your trading platform. To have one computer just for trading. I did that when I started trading. Then I kind of realized when I got serious about it, if I'm going to build something like this, before this I had four 27-inch monitors on a stand. But when I was starting to build a, a little bit bigger setup, I don't really have room for another computer unless I put it in another room. So they say not to run anything else on a computer. Now I don't have it packed with games and all kinds of stuff like that, but I have Reaper on there, which is an audio production program. Works great. And I have DaVinci Resolve to edit these videos on there. Works great, hasn't caused me any problems so far, and I have lots of storage left, so until it gives me trouble, I uh, don't see any reason to change it. One thing you should be sure you have is enough free storage on your hard drive. Again, hard drives should be solid state drives, no spinning hard drives, unless maybe it's a second one, but I would just get rid of it. They're so cheap now, you can change them yourself, it's easy. When a hard drive gets full, it will start to crash the computer all the time. And the most important point of anything today is the backup part. Make sure that you don't get stuck in a trade. Trade on a physical platform on your computer that lets you put a bracket order in. As soon as you hit the buy or the sell, you have a bracket order in place, a stop loss and a profit target in the market in case you lose internet. You want those orders to be on the server side. So once they're sent from your computer, they're on the server. When they get hit, they're triggered. You don't want orders that are sitting on your computer and you have to rely on your computer to execute that when it comes to that point. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it shed a little bit of light on things and maybe let you know that it's not quite the same barrier to entry that you might have thought it might be. And just that you don't always have to have the best of everything to do anything. I, I live that. I like to get things that are good enough, that are going to do the job just fine, 
Why waste money on more than that? If you got some value out of this video, please like the video and subscribe for more. There's going to be new videos at least every week. Down in the comments, let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll do my best to put it into a video. Down in the description, I'll have links to everything that's on here and show you what the components are. Like I say, I put this whole thing together, maybe $1,500 US for a system like this that I use every day to make my living. And I have absolutely no reservations about putting a 10 lot, a 15 lot, even a 20 lot on this. It's never failed. And if you'd like to subscribe to my new newsletter, link is down in the bottom. It's free. It's not going to flood your inbox. Once a week, I'm going to send you some tips and tricks at my key levels I'm looking at for the week. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.